Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number 21. And in this video, we're going to talk about the multiplication law of probability, an and logical test. Now, before we talk about the multiplication law of probability, I want to remind you about the conditional probability rule. The probability of A, given that B has already occurred, equals the AND logical test probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And we use that formula with cross-tab frequency distributions and joint probability tables. But from this formula, there it is listed there, that's the conditional probability formula. But from this formula, we can transform it to get our multiplication law of probability formula. If we take this formula, multiply both sides times the probability of b, that gives us a probability of b in the denominator and the numerator, so we cancel them out. And bam, there it is. That's the probability of event A and B. And using multiplication, we can take probability of B times the probability of A given that B occurred. And there it is. That's our multiplication law of probability formula. Now if we go over to the sheet V21, here's our multiplication rule for dependent events. Remember, these are conditional probabilities, so that means the events A and B are related or dependent. And here's our multiplication rule, and we have two options. Both of them calculate the probability of event A and B. So we can do probability of B times the probability of A given that B already occurred, or probability of A times the probability of B given that A occurred. Now, if the events are not related, called independent events, then we simply multiply the two probabilities to get the probability that A and B occur. And once we have these rules, we can calculate things like, what's the probability of pulling a queen and then a second queen, given that we've already pulled queen one? Or if we have two independent events, like two stocks that you own that are not related, the probability that Alphabet Google stock will go up and the probability that Safeway stock will go up. Multiply those two, and you have the probability that both will go up. Now I want to jump over to our PDF notes. Now we're on page 18 in the PDF notes. And we want to define independent events. Two events are independent if the probability of one event is not affected by the occurrence of the other. For example, rolling one die does not affect the roll of the next die. If I roll a one on the first die, it has no effect what happens on the second die. There's still one side that has a one and six total sides for both dies. Whether or not alphabet stock, that's Google, goes up in a day or a year doesn't affect whether or not Safeway stock goes up in that same day or that same year. Now, the rule of independence says that if they really are independent, and B has no effect on A, then the probability of A, given that B occurred, is equal to the probability of A. Also, if A has no effect on B, then the probability of B, given that A occurred, remember, A doesn't have any effect on B, well, that means it's equal to the probability of B. If the rule of independence does not hold, then the events are dependent. For example, here's the cross-tab table that we used from the last couple videos. If we have the probability use Facebook, given that the person uses YouTube, well, that equals 0.716. And if we compare that to the probability that someone uses Facebook equal to 0.69, using the rule of independence, we see that the two probabilities are not equal. Therefore, the events use Facebook and use YouTube are not independent. They are dependent. As a second example, in this case, independent events, if the probability of making a sale for any particular sales call is 
and it's assumed that each sales call is independent. That means whether or not you make a sale on the first one has nothing to do with whether you make a sale on the second call. Well, that would mean that the probability that you make a sale on call two, well, that's equal to 15%. And the probability that you make that sale on call two, given that you already made a sale on call one, well, that's equal to 15% too. The two events are independent. Now, back over here in Excel, let's see if we can use this multiplication rule. Now, here we've estimated the probability that Google, that's the alphabet stock, will go up in the year 2023. That's at 0.65. And the probability that Safeway will go up in that same year, 0.35. And we want to know the probability that both will go up. Well, they're assumed to be independent events, so I simply multiply the two probabilities. And when I hit Enter, I get 22.75%. Now let's try an example off to the side here. I want to know the probability that I could pull a queen and then in succession pull a second queen. And I'll add a little formatting. Now, if we're pulling in succession and we're not putting the card back in the deck, then these are definitely dependent events. The sample space will change. Well, what's the probability for pulling the first queen? Well, there's four total queens, and there's a deck of 52 cards. All right, so that's the first probability. Now we need to multiply it by a conditional probability. Well, how many queens are left? There's three queens left. And how many cards in the denominator? What's the size of the sample space? 51. And so multiplying these will give us a very small probability of pulling two straight queens. Now let's try a different example. All right, I typed this out. And here's the probability that you can make a sale on any particular sales call. That's going to be 15%. And we want to know the probability that we can make a sale on call one and on call two. That means in succession, back to back. Well, two calls like this are assumed to be independent. So we simply take the probability for making a sale on any particular call. That's the first call times same probability, but that's for the second call. So 15 times 15 is 225. So it should be 2.25%. Now, next, we want to scroll down and look at something called a probability tree. Now, we learned how to do a tree diagram. And this is a type of tree diagram. But here, we want to add some probabilities. Now, this is the same data set we've been using. A random survey of 200 people asked whether they use Facebook or YouTube. And the way this probability tree works is we have to pick one of these first. And I picked use YouTube. So we list that as the marginal probabilities. Now, the sample space is 200 here. So 162 people out of 200 said yes, they use YouTube. 38 said no. But once we get to each one of these nodes, we list yes and no for do you use Facebook. Now here, the sample space has changed. We're talking use YouTube. So that 162 becomes the denominator. And then for that sample space, 116 said yes, they use Facebook. 46 said no. Down here, no, they don't use YouTube. 38, that's the denominator. 16 says no, nope, I don't use Facebook. 22 said yes. And the cool thing about a probability tree is along any particular path, you multiply the marginal probability times the conditional probability and that gives you the AND. And that's the multiplication rule. Here's the probability that someone said they use YouTube. We put it there. The conditional probability use Facebook. Given that you use YouTube, you put it there. And then you multiply, bam, bam, an AND logical test. That's where the person said they used YouTube and they use Facebook. And so you can do that along any path using the multiplication rule. Now, we can build these probability trees on paper using a pencil or a pen. And actually, it's kind of helpful when you're learning to do it that way. But we can also do it in Excel. We have selected YouTube as our marginal probability. So we calculate use YouTube from the whole sample space. And then our conditional probability 
that's just use Facebook given that the sample space has changed. And then to get our AND equals, we used YouTube and we used Facebook. And when I hit Enter, I get 58. Now you can complete this. And when you complete it, it should look something like this. Now over in the PDF notes, page 21 shows a probability tree. Here we have a cross tab, and it summarizes, did you have a heart attack, and did you smoke? What type of smoke? No, moderate, heavy. We have our marginals. We have our conditional probabilities. And there's the and. So the probability that they had a heart attack and they were a heavy smoker, multiply marginal times conditional using the multiplication rule, and we get 18%. All right, in this video, we talked about the multiplication law of probability. We saw how to create a probability tree. We saw some examples of using the multiplication rule. We use the multiplication rule on independent events and events that were not independent. And we also saw that our conditional probability rule is really the multiplication rule in disguise. All right, next video, we'll get to use lots of multiplying and conditional probabilities and a probability tree to talk about Bayes' theorem. All right, we'll see you next video.